This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Coffee and Q, the Cajun, Two Burner, and the Discord can't go wrong with any of those seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Don't know what to get? Why not just get one of the three box sets that the Mad Canadian has? He has the Just Sunday, which consists of the S&P Buds, Norn Heat, the Cajun, and the Smoked. Or you can go with the Sweet Heat. Includes the Four Horsemen, Discord, Old Fashioned, and the Two Border. Or why not just get the whole hog? One of each of the seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by Iron Bean Coffee. Who? Iron Bean Coffee Company. They are a premium, small batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned, Ohio-based, organic, fair trade company. Did I get all of that out? Did yes, I do sir. all of that? Uh, great for Christmas. The six pack is back. If you want to get someone a sampler, uh, that is now back and available. If you have a coffee snob in your life and you want to give them, get them a variety of coffees, the six pack is back. You can go ahead and order them that, uh, gift cards are also available. If you just look at the coffee and you're trying to get a present for someone and you're lost, you get a nice real specific gift card, which I think is always a winning gift. Uh, and if you have someone who's kind of a K cup person, the fierce, the Rage Against the Dying Light, and the Ride or Die, uh, of which I have right here, the Ride or Die, uh, that is all available in K-Cup. Um, I actually just had the Ride or Die for the very first time this week, and it's tremendous. I now can't decide if I like that or the Cast Iron more. So that that's my own personal issue that I have to figure out. Uh, if you want to uh, have your own issue you need to figure out, again, you can try that sampler bag. And you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. For the rest of 2020, use the promo code 2020 to get 20% off your order. At ironbeancoffee.com, Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What is up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? How you guys doing? You know, I thought to myself there, hey, that was a good ad read. I didn't spend too much time on it. Then I looked, looked down at the timestamp. I was like, God, I, I, I'm just blah, 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 blah sometimes. <laughs> oh, good. We love our sponsors. We do love our sponsors. Our sponsors are the best. I and I'm not. I mean, I, I, I know that's a thing like that they literally pay us to say, but we don't have to be saying it right now. They They actually are the best. This is. This is just truth time with, with Jared and Kyle. That's what that's what this is. This is this is truth time. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it. Yep. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jared. <laughs> yeah. It's uh we we knew. We knew that this game might not happen and the game's not happening. But you know what? We're really not going to focus on that. I feel like, mm -hmm. especially by the time this episode comes out, it's such old news and it sucks. No. So we're, we're not going to talk about Ohio State and Michigan not happening. We're just, we're not going to do it. It's been talked to death by now. So let's focus on what is and let's not focus on what isn't. Uh, know that just because Kyle and I aren't talking about it, that doesn't mean that we don't care or that we aren't like deeply devastated by it or anything like that. It's just what is there to say that hasn't been said already. That's it. So mm -hmm. Kyle, let's, let's focus on a game that actually happened real quick. Not going to spend a ton of time on this, but the Ohio state Buckeyes defeat the Notre Dame fighting Irish 90 to 85. Yeah, of high scoring game here. And it might not be the only time we see Ohio State beat Notre Dame, maybe? Maybe. maybe? Possible. Maybe. Maybe possible. <laughs> it is possible. Yeah, such a high-scoring game. 90 to 85. These Both of these teams were on fire behind the arc. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Ohio State was 48% and Notre Dame was 46%. Yeah, <laughs> they could. They, it was three point just a shooting contest for these teams here. But good, good thing for Ohio State, though, that they hit their free throws in this game. 87% from from free throw line there, which is very key because they needed pretty much every one of those to win this game. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I really, really hats off to um, Little and Washington. Liddell, come on. <sighs> Thank you, Liddell. Let me start over. <laughs> this is all staying in. We don't edit the video, Kyle. I know. Liddell. Liddell and Washington both had really good games. Uh, Liddell had a um, 19 points, 12 rebounds, just monster, monster game there. Yeah, unfortunately, I feel like he was the only one. I guess that's not fair. I don't know. Basketball is weird. Like, watching the game, having not looked at the stats until I was putting the notes together, watching the game, I would have sworn that Notre Dame would was like killed Ohio State from the three point line. No. They they both had eleven three pointers. Ohio State on one less attempt. Okay, but surely Notre Dame killed us on the boards. Eh, three more. That's not not some crazy amount. I was surprised that they both had the same amount of offensive rebounds because it seemed like Notre Dame, especially in that second half there. Yeah. It seemed like they were getting a ton of offensive rebounds, but <laughs> key, key, thing, key, thing, key thing here in this game, look at the second to the last line there. Only eight turnovers for yeah. Ohio State. Only eight. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes. Yeah, it was, it was a good game overall. Um, watching the game, I feel like I had a lot to complain about, but looking back over the stats, I, I don't remember what they were. Like... I, <laughs> I, basketball is just weirdly emotional like that. Like when your team gets the offensive rebound, you think, whew, we got away from one or we got away with one. And when the other team gets the offensive rebound, you're all a bunch of failures. Why aren't you getting the rebounds? <laughs> <laughs> so next game's here. Uh, Ohio State will be home against Cleveland State. And then next Wednesday, they will be going to Purdue. Oh, man. Well, I wouldn't have gone anyway. And then the <laughs> the following you Saturday, can't, you can't get into that building. No. Well, they I think they are selling tickets, but either way, you I'll couldn't get into hosting, that building if it wasn't twenty twenty. Kyle hosting hosting, tickets hosting are impossible. UNC. Yeah. Oh, I had a cha- I had a hosting? chance to get some. Oh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. It's it's in Columbus. Uh, I thought it was. I thought oh no no no! This is the one in Cleveland. This is the one in Cleveland. This is in Quicken Loans Arena. Uh, okay, whatever. I'm 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 done with basketball. Let's move forward. Kyle, <laughs> college football playoff. Uh, Ohio State's number four again. Okay. Yep. Moving on. That's but it. but don't don't listen to Herb Street. Don't listen to anyone on Twitter. Those people aren't in the committee room. The committee. Ohio State without a Big Ten title has put Ohio State at fourth. Ohio State will pick up another win when they defeat Northwestern next week. They will be Big Ten champions, and they'll be third or fourth. Alabama will be first. The ACC champion will be second. Ohio State will be third and play either Clemson or Notre Dame in the first round of the playoff. I think that was what's going to happen. Or... They'll somehow end up at fourth, which I think is a possibility. And then they have to play Alabama, which isn't going to be fun. I think Alabama is the best team in the country this year. But Well, here, here's, here, here's something else to think about. Really want that what, third what, seed. What if Alabama loses? They lose to Florida. Yeah. I think how they lose matters. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, I don't know. I feel like we can go over. Yeah, more... we can go over this later but there, there is one particular scenario that would put Ohio State in a very difficult position here I don't believe it I, I know I know I, I I saw what Herb Street I didn't watch I haven't watched I have no this. idea what Herb Street said well he basically no said that if 
Clemson wins and Florida wins, then Ohio State's out. Okay, that's that, what I that's what I was thinking. Depending on how I, that which is, I would, do not believe that would put Ohio State in a more difficult position. But no, that I puts, think you still need, I think you still need to reward an undefeated conference champion into the playoffs. That does not put Ohio State into a difficult position. That puts the playoff committee into a difficult position. Okay, but it's a fair enough. It's it's a situation in which I think I do absolutely believe Ohio State still is third or fourth. Kyle, I'm having a terrible beard day. I feel like I haven't looked in a mirror all day, and now I'm looking at myself on camera, and I'm just I feel like I'm having a terrible beard day. Me too. <laughs> You're having a terrible beard genetics. I know. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, let us see. Do, 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 do. All right, Speaking Kyle. Of Big Ten championship. That kind of already kind of went to that already. The yeah, Big yeah. Ten reversing their mind, removing the six game rule for the championship. So it is now Ohio State versus Northwestern. Sunday noon, was it? They changed it to noon, right? I, I believe they changed it to noon. It was supposed to be at eight o'clock. I think they moved it to noon. I think they moved it to noon expecting Ohio State wasn't going to be in it, but I, I don't know. It's. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm not worried about it. I'm really not. Kyle, I want to get into the meat of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, The meat of the show for this week, we're going to do slew picks later, so don't worry about that. Um, We're still doing our slew picks. We'll probably buzz through them pretty quick, but we're still doing our slew picks. But uh, meat of the show today, I think what I want it to be is the early signing period preview. The early signing period starts next week. Uh, next it, Wednesday, the 16th through Friday. Yes. The 8th. So Ohio state looks to be poised to have an amazing class. So <laughs> if you haven't been paying attention, this, mm-hmm. this recruiting class is amazing. It has a chance, a pretty good chance. It has a chance to be even more amazing. Come Friday, Friday at eight o'clock PM Eastern time. Uh, Emeka Abuka, who, if you've listened to us at all during the off season, then, you know, is a guy we've talked a ton about a uh, top 10 player in the entire 2021 recruiting class. He's just sort of been ever present in the conversation around Ohio state recruiting He's one of the best players in the country. Will end up being one of the best players in Ohio State's recruiting class. But we've all just sort of been waiting. Well, he's going to commit to Ohio State. We've all felt very confident for a very long time he was going to commit to Ohio State. He was going to hold out and take his visits, though. He said for a long time, I'm going to hold, I'm going to take my visits. Visits are no longer possible. The no visit dead period has now extending beyond even the later, the actual national signing day, signing day. So he takes a pseudo visit to Oklahoma. Can't, doesn't meet with the coaches. He's not allowed. He, he does sort of tour the campus, go there with some of Oklahoma's current commits and other potential commits. And he does this last weekend. And all of a sudden there starts to be some smoke. Starts to be some smoke like, uh Oh, Apparently, all of the Oklahoma recruits who he was hanging out with all weekend were convinced. We're absolutely convinced he's coming to Ohio State. Convinced, or excuse me, to Oklahoma. Absolutely convinced. So this guy who we had been counting on all of this time for this recruiting class, all of a sudden, there was a lot of smoke pointing towards Oklahoma. I'm here to tell you that I'm not worried. I was worried for a second. There, there's a bit of that buzz. That, that sort of post-visit glow that, that players sometimes have right after visiting a place. Sort of sit down, relax, let that glow buzz off, and, and we find out where we are. And uh, I give Ohio State like a 93% chance. Okay. What, what? I, I was like 6% Oklahoma. And I'll, I'm going to hold out 1% out there. Just in case he completely blows our minds and goes to Washington. Just stays home there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, our good friend JT Tuimolo. 
that um that I'm gonna give you like a ninety percent on. I'm gonna give you an A minus. Okay. Yeah. Better odd than what you're giving him there. You've given Ohio State an eighty four percent. Yeah. Well, part of the reason for I I I mean eighty four is still a really good number, and part of the reason for that is that JTT, who I I like to call call him that for short, uh, and for no other reasons, just because it's shorter. <laughs> uh, not expected to sign during the early signing period. He's going to wait for National Signing Day in February. So with all of that extra time there, it's just, I don't want to go any higher than like 84, 85. Because like stuff happens. That's mm-hmm. it. It's just sort of like stuff happens. If if I, if national, if the early national signing period was actually the drop dead date, which it's not. But if it were, if you absolutely had to make a decision right now, I'd be much more confident that it's Ohio State, but it's not. There's a couple months left in this recruitment. So we just gonna put it at like an 84% and, and we'll find out. Mm-hmm. It's to be note too that JTT is not expected to sign during the early. I, I literally just said that. You, yes. <laughs> Thanks for paying attention, Kyle. You're welcome. <laughs> so I was getting prepared for the next one here to talk about. Um, Rajon Davis. Yeah. This one's an interesting one because he's already a hard commit to LSU after yeah. they, I think it was after they won their semifinal game. He announced his hard commit to to LSU. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the change of, um, the change of senior that he may be doing here. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, he's from California. Uh, he's from Mater Day, uh, who's uh, a name that if you follow recruiting, especially Ohio State recruiting this past year, is a place Ohio State's attempting to, to get a foothold in and puts out a ton of amazing talent. And so here's one more guy who Ohio State's potentially trying to get a foot in with Mater Day. And as Kyle said, he's been recruited to LSU for nearly a full year. For the he committed on January 1, 2020. Well, he, like a few other LSU people, are shopping around right now. Uh, LSU is going to lose a few people out of their out of their recruiting class. Some of them might be headed to Ole Miss. Some of them might be headed to Bama. Might be headed to some other places. Uh, in the case of Rajon Davis, I think your two options right now, and again, this is another guy who we aren't expecting to sign during the early signing period, so we've got a couple months to go on Davis. Right now, he's either going to stay home, go to USC. USC is looking not terrible right now, so USC may be looking attractive. Their, their recruiting class is pretty decent at the moment, so maybe. Maybe we're looking at USC uh, I'm giving Ohio State a slight edge here, though. Uh, there's always been communication with Ohio State. There's continued been communication with Ohio State. I think that there's a very real possibility that Rajon Davis comes to Ohio State. There's also a very real possibility that he goes to USC. The one thing I'm pretty sure about is that he does not commit to LSU during the early signing period and that he will decommit eventually. Mm-hmm. That that's where yeah. I'm at with Davis. I, I right now my best bet is simply to say not LSU. Yeah, nobody over at the 24/7 Sports has any idea here because there's only two predictions. One giving a solid 10 confidence that he's going to USC, but that but was that, a year and a half ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's And then the other one was a solid 10 to LSU, which was almost a year ago. So no one's no one's predicting any flips yet, nope. but that's only because like I so I I'm putting numbers on these. I'm putting it about 45% to Ohio State. I'm putting another I'm putting 40% on USC and I'm just putting a 15 with a bit of a shrug emoji. I just okay. it just could could go somewhere else potentially. There's a couple months left, who knows. But good good chance for Ohio State. Very good chance for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Those are the three guys we need to keep an eye on for the rest of the recruiting period. The 2021 class has basically boiled down to that. Mm-hmm. 
So we, if those three were to commit to Ohio State, that would bring the total of 23 recruits for this class here. That is correct. I think there also exists the possibility that Ohio State maybe pursues an offensive lineman. I, I don't have a name for you, so I that's why I, I don't. But prop, maybe an Ohio kid who's committed elsewhere, someone who they might pursue in between the early signing period and the national signing, yeah, the proper national signing day. So maybe there's another offensive lineman, a three-star developmental guy who Ohio State will pursue during that time. But for the most part, we're looking at 20 commitments. And um, we're not going to read all those to you, uh, but you, you can look it up. <laughs> 20 commitments plus Emeka Abuka plus JT Tuimolo and plus Rajon Davis. I, I'm expecting no drama from any of the 20 existing players. Mm -hmm. no, no drama there. I expect all of them to sign during the si early signing period. I expect no flips, no decommits, no delays. I think it's going to be relatively drama free. So like we year. really, I think, I think last year was pretty drama free as well. I think so. Oh, God, this, it's a year ago. I don't remember, but the, but like I said, those three guys are really the names to keep an eye on. I feel very confident that Omeka Ibuka, we won't even need to keep an eye on him. It's just like those 20 solid players will become the 21 solid players, mm -hmm. the drama free 21 players. And then you know, JTT and Rajon are just people who are going to have to watch for the next couple months. And again, maybe a, an offensive line, a developmental offensive lineman to be named later. I, I think is basically how we're boiling down this 2021 class right now. All right, cool. So where does that put Ohio State now for for this class? Right now, currently they are ranked number two behind Alabama. Alabama gained another recruit since I think probably the last time we talked. They inch their way a little bit further ahead of Ohio State. Currently, Alabama has 22 commits with six five stars with 314 points, and Ohio State has 20 currently with four five stars sitting at 303. Alabama's class is nuts right now. Let's just go ahead and say that. Complete. It's, it's completely nuts, and by the way, they aren't done. Alabama's class is so nuts right now that Ohio State can add their 20 players plus Rajon Davis plus JTT plus Abuka. And, even, and then they'll have the number one recruiting class. And that's assuming that Alabama doesn't add anyone else during that time. Uh, technically speaking, adding JTT and Abuka which I feel like there's a real solid possibility that that happens at JTT at Abuka. Even then that puts Ohio state, like just a razor thin lead over Alabama's current class. And again, that assumes that they don't add that they're done, that they would sit pretty at 22, which they're not going to do. They're, they're going to add another two players, probably maybe three. Uh, they're looking to poach an LSU kid here or there. They're looking to poach uh, a wide receiver from Michigan, whose name I'm forgetting. And they're also in very good position. Let's see. A uh, very good position for Xavier Sorley, uh, a linebacker. And they're in pretty good position for Tumase Adelier, a Name that, again, if you were listening to us during the summer, during the recru recruiting conversations during the summer, uh, a name that you're very familiar with, he was once committed to Ohio State. Point is, is that Ohio State's recruiting class can go perfect from here on out, and they still might not get the number one recruiting class. Now you might ask yourself, Jared, does that really matter? What do you think, Kyle? Does it matter? In Love the grand this? scheme of things, no, it doesn't really but it'd be nice getting that first 
first time getting that uh that number one recurring spot from the composite rankings yeah uh ohio state has never had the number one recruiting class they've since... had number two many times remind me to talk about 2018 when i'm done with this point all right ohio state has had the number two recruiting class as kyle said Ohio State has never won in the history of when they really started keeping track of these things, which admittedly goes back to the year 2000. So 20 years, you know, 120 plus years of college football. We've only been doing this for 20 of those. So, you know, great, great, great assault. But Ohio State's never won a recruiting class in the Internet era of college football recruiting. So it would be really nice to do that. Ultimately, does it actually matter? No. Because if we're talking about Alabama having a class score of 220, or excuse me, of 322 points, and Ohio State having a class score of 320 points, what's what's two points in the grand scheme of thing? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Means zilch. It's, it's a razor thin number. It means nothing, realistically. And that, and again, that 320 points, that's if they add the three players we're keeping an eye on. Yep. If they do that, and if Bama finishes out their class the way they want to finish out their class, Ohio State's not going to win the, not going to win the recruiting crown. Yep. But that 320.51 points Again, not counting whatever wherever Bama ends up for this recruiting class. So not, not counting that, but based on all of the past recruiting classes, would still place this recruiting class at the fourth best of all time. Well, and, and of course, by all time, I mean this millennia, because past 20 years, yada, 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 see what I just said before. Mm-hmm. Point is, is that Ohio State it has an amazing recruiting class, regardless if they get number one. This is a great recruiting class, but I just, I want that number one spot. And that's, that's, there's nothing logical there. It's just, I, no. I want it. I want no. it. That's it. I want it. All right. Um. Also in recruiting news, if we want to jump up to 2022, Jared. Yes. Be the... Let's see our favorite quarterback. Oh, Quinn. Ooh. Of the 2022 class of the, okay. Of the 2022 class. Okay. Oh, that was, that was some dangerous waters. You were about <laughs> to wade in there, buddy. Uh, Quinn Ewers. Yes. Now at a rating of one point yes. oh, 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 a perfect four seven, a perfect one. That that's, that's perfect. You can't get any better than one. To compare Kyle, Trevor how Lawrence. Many, how, how many other players have had that perfect one rating? Uh, Jadavion Clowney, Robert mm-hmm. Nimdichki, uh, yep. Rayshon Gary, mm-hmm. Vince Young, Ernie Sims. Ah, did you have that on, on, on hand there? I did. Ah, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to. Yep. Five people, five people. And there's been a handful, there's been a few who were at that, well, two that were at that 9999. One of them, Trevor Lawrence. One of them, Trevor Lawrence, yes. And who, Kyle, sits there at point nine 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 eight. I think it was eight. Yes, that is Justin Fields. And then if you want to go down one more, 9997 mm-hmm. to our prior. Yeah. These, so only one quarterback in the history, of course, means since 2000, in the history of recruiting has had a one, and it was Vince Young. Vince Young so good that he convinced people that Texas was still relevant. <laughs> and they got him a national title. Yes, he did. That's how good Vince Young is. Uh, that's how good Quinn Ewers is. He is now ranked better than every quarterback 
ever, except Vince Young, in which he is tied. Yes. Better than Trevor Lawrence, better than Andrew Luck, better than Justin Fields. Name them. Better than Joe Burrow wasn't that highly ranked out of high school, but you get my point. If you're wondering how good is Quinn Ewers, that good. Mm -hmm. He is that good. All right, Kyle. So real Let's... quick, jumping jumping back over to the 2021 class. Mm -hmm. Just want to throw some numbers out there. You ready? If they get JTT, he is currently ranked per the 24-7 composite ranking number three. Now, according to the 24-7 proper ranking, he's number one. But we're going we're going composite. Mm hmm Number three, Emeka Buka, number nine. Jack Sawyer, who's a member of this class already, nationally number four. Ohio State could possibly have three of the top 10 players in the 24-7 sports composite ranking. Which Alabama would do the same. Yes, they would. <laughs> yes, they absolutely would. You know what's amazing? Maybe most amazing about this. Jack Sawyer, by the way, Pickerington North, local kid. What's really amazing is that in this class right now is a five-star quarterback. And we hardly ever talk about him. Kyle McCord. Amazing. An amazing fight. You don't, there are not a lot of five-star quarterbacks. No. He's another pro style, by the way. And if we're, again, if we're talking about quarterbacks, Quinn Ewers is being described as a quarterback who is a pro style passer, but athletic enough to potentially, if it were, you know, kind of like Justin Fields, kind of like, uh, Cade, no, uh, why did I almost say Cade Stover, CJ Stroud, mm -hmm. Athletic enough to be a dual threat, but such a good pocket passer that they're still labeling them a pro passing quarterback. The future, Kyle, at quarterback is very, very bright. Very. Two incredible quarterbacks on the roster right now in Miller and Stroud. A five-star quarterback sitting in this recruiting class, Kyle McCord. And the tied for highest rated quarterback ever recruiting recruiting wise sitting in the 2022 class mm -hmm. my goodness yes the future is bright at ohio state because kyle when in doubt pick the quarterback yes speaking of five stars five star let's canadians hear, let's hear from our, <laughs> our five star sponsors there you go me first or you first i don't care well, let's let's do the iron bean let's hear from a good friend over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Take it away, Jared. Yes. Um, I told you that the Fierce, in the first ad read, I told you that the Fierce, that the Rage Against the Dying Light and the Ride or Die were available in K-Cups. I have expressed my personal love for the Ride or Die as this bag back here is empty now. Uh, I have had... Um, that one might be my favorite. If that one is not my favorite, then the cast iron, which is also a medium roast, like the ride or die. That's a, that's a medium roast. The fierce, however, is a highly caffeinated dark roast. If you're really looking for that sort of buzz, that jolt, if you're really, if you're just, if you're a person who drinks it primarily for the caffeine, you might want to check out that fierce, which again is available in K cup. And, you know, if you have too much caffeine, you might bark like Leo does. That's Kyle, have you been giving your dog coffee beans again? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like two or three of the fierce beans would send him into like a manic spiral. Yes. Yes. So you have all of those great coffees available. The six pack is available. You're supporting an Ohio based company, a veteran owned company. They have flavored coffees available, including a blueberry, a mint chocolate chip, a unicorn. You don't know what's in the unicorn as well as a mom's carrot cake. 
So those are some flavored coffees available. Uh, there's tons, just tons more of dark roast and medium roast uh, that you can all, you can check out all of those different ones. Shop for yourself at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I mean, what what have we not said about the Mad Canadian? Uh, we've been the, doing this for a year. We've said, I think we've said all of it. Yeah. <laughs> he's made some fantastic spices, created some new ones. He's up to 14 of them. He he writes angry emails. Oh, he gives so he gives he gives promotion promotion codes for for our listeners here. And now he has a box set. If you just cannot set, if you just cannot just decide on one. You can get multiple and and save some money at the same time. Mention it for about a month now. He has the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog. Uh, these are great packages for a Christmas gift for your special uh, special one, male or female, uh, either whoever you are or whatever you're into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, these are just great season, great seasonings. Check out all of them over at the madcanadianbbq.com. You can also save 10% extra by using Sloopcast 10. That is Sloopcast 10. Check out for 10% more. No, 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 Kyle. Time out. There's no way you can save money by buying the gift set and yeah. then get another 10% off. That's yeah. just not possible. That's mad. <laughs> you win. Mad Canadian Barbecue <laughs> Company, where he has your butt covered for Christmas. Okay, Kyle, let's do some sloop picks. Yes, sir. Let's Ohio get... State and Michigan was canceled, but if you think that's going to stop us from doing sloop picks, you are wrong, good sir. All right. All right, let's go ahead and knock through these here. First game, we have Alabama and Arkansas. <laughs> you, re- you really went full Arkansas, didn't you? I did. Uh, am what I going to do about it? I, nothing. Literally nothing. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> positively nothing. Alabama is a 32 and a half point favorite. Kyle, I only included this one in the slew picks this week. Purely 100% because of the four presumptive playoff teams, they're the only ones playing this weekend. Yep. You're right. <laughs> you are right. I'm thinking like, no, they have the week off. So Yes. Yeah. So yeah, uh, 32 points over the Razorbacks. Uh, I here, here's an interesting, you ready for an interesting number? Mm-hmm. Yes. Against the spread, mm-hmm. Alabama this year is seven and two. Yes. Against the spread, Arkansas this year, seven and two. Ooh. Ooh. So from that perspective, this is going to be a great game. <laughs> <laughs> from that perspective strictly from that perspective this is going to be a great game that four to five possession game right there <laughs> this is going to be a real battle for arkansas not to lose by 32 or you more. know what i'm going to go with the razorbacks then i'm going to go with the razorbacks give you me know, arkansas you know kyle i i'm not i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go with bama and to note jared this is our last um, second to last, second to last, but our last regular season pick them game. It is the second time you've hit your mic this episode. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was unlike <laughs> last week, Kyle, I was not complimenting you. We are tied, Jared. We are, we tied. are tied, tied going in into this week. All right. Next up here, we have Illinois and Northwestern. And yes, as of right now, Northwestern is scheduled to play. Unlike what a lot of people think where Northwestern should that was not never, play. That was never real. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Northwestern 14 and a half. And you know what, Jared? I kind of like Illinois to keep this close. I think I think that they are they have the ability to make this really close. Northwestern just does not score a lot of points here. I mean, look, the over under is 40 and a half. Yeah. It's 40 and a half. Yep. I'll take I'll take Illinois to cover here. I think Northwestern will win, but it's not going to be as big of a win here. I, I think that North I think Northwestern would win by like 10, 8 points, something like that. 
I'll take Illinois. I will not. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Northwestern here. Ooh, going all in here. Yeah, I just I don't like I, I don't like Illinois at all. Like not even a little bit. Okay. And the only thing that I that makes me hesitate is just as you said, Northwestern not scoring many points. They're currently averaging just under twenty five points a game. But so if they're averaging 25 points a game, then that essentially means that they need to hold Illinois to about 10, which I think is entirely possible because I, Illinois on offense is just not very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Next up here, we have UNC and Miami. This is, I believe, a makeup game. Probably. I believe so. Uh, UNC is a three point favorite. Uh, Miami is a three-point favorite. Oh, crap. Kyle, we have... Did I write it wrong in the notes? You did. Uh-oh. You are right. Yeah, Miami is a three-point favorite. Oh, boy. And I screwed... By the way, we you, you aren't... We forgot to read Dinger's picks. Guest <sighs> picker this week, Dinger. And I definitely sent him the wrong spread. Got so... You. Uh, you know, the good news is, is that he picked North Carolina and the points. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll send him an email and we'll figure out what he actually wants his All thing right. to be. So first one, back a track here, Alabama here. He says here, nothing. Hold on. Don't, nothing... don't, don't skip. He put funny team names for all the teams. Don't skip that. Okay. He has Alabama gold standards at Arkansas. No standards. Haha, <laughs> get it. No stand gold standard versus no standards. Yes. Yeah. He says there, there's nothing the Razorbacks can do to stop the tie from scoring, and I suspect Saban wants to lock down that number one seed. Alabama covers. That that number one seed's already locked down. Yep. Um as long as they win, doesn't matter by how much. No. All right. Uh Wisconsin Cheeseheads at the Iowa Cornholes. Hawkeyes are on a four game run while the Badgers are on a two game skid. We didn't even cover that one. I apologize. Well, <laughs> I don't think that's your fault. He, he didn't put it in the correct order. Nope. Wow. Come Illinois, on, nigger. Come Illinois, on, man. Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. <laughs> Here we go. Illinois, no beards versus Northwestern Chicagoans. Also known as the would have lost and going to lose bowl. Northwestern will be looking ahead too much for me to take them against 14 and a half, Illinois and the points. And then the other one here, what was it? The one we have not covered yet, Jared, North Carolina and Miami. Miami, yeah. a three point favorite. Who do you have, Jared? So, yeah, I, I totally messed all of this up. Uh, yeah, Miami. I, I like Miami here to to win. The three points is not enough to scare me off. I would be much happier if it was two and a half points as opposed to three and a half points. But uh, I guess this is just the world we live in. Mm. I don't know what that meant. I really don't know what I get that. I guess that's just the world we live. I have no idea what I'm supposed to mean by that. None. Yeah. Same but I, 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 I <laughs> just stop jared <laughs> yeah i agree uh i don't i'm not a i just like miami's offense just a lot better i think they'll be able yeah. to i think they'll be able to easily win this game here i'll take miami uh, unc's too sporadic sometimes they're good sometimes they're not mm-hmm. i feel like miami we we know who miami is they beat the teams they're supposed to be. They get beat by the teams they're supposed to get beat by. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's just, and by the way, that one team was Clemson. Yeah. So right. I, 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 I like, I like Miami a lot more. Three points not enough to scare me off. Mm-hmm. That's what Chad I actually Ding- wanted to say before I went blank last time. Chad Dinger says here, North Carolina, actual air Jordans at the Miami fake Cubas. Mac Brown's heartwarming. It was Texas, not me story. We'll continue this week because Miami is due. NC, well, he 
he has here NC in the points, but he's taken pretty much North Carolina here. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll need to send him an email to clarify exactly. Yeah. Cause I sent him the wrong spread. All right. Um, Sorry. Dinger. Next game here, Jared. I guess we're even for you not putting them in order. Dinger. Sparty and Penn state. Penn state's a 14 and a half point favorite. And from what I saw last weekend, Jared. Yeah. Hard on Penn state here. Hard on it. I do not trust Michigan state at all. Yeah. Michigan state's terrible. Um, I have no idea. I haven't followed. Been, I've not been following <laughs> too much going on in the Ohio state world recently. I have no idea what's happening in the Michigan state world. If they still are going to start Rocky Lombardi, despite the fact that he's clearly the worst quarterback in the Big Ten, including a few of the guys on his roster, at least one of the guys on his roster, then I would take Penn State plus 20. Now, maybe, maybe they're finally going... I'm blanking on his name. Do you remember his name, Kyle? The backup quarterback who came in and looked like a competent quarterback for Michigan State last week? I don't suppose it matters. Point is, is that this is, I'm going to take Penn state. I'm going to eat those 14 and a half points, but that really has a lot more to do with how little I think of Michigan state as opposed to how much I think of Penn state. Although Penn state has caught rhythm beating Michigan by 10 points, beating Rutgers by 16 points. Not that either of those teams are any good, but Michigan State appears to be real bad. Real, real bad. Much, much worse than Rutgers. They they beat Rutgers by, like I said, 16 points. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take them minus 14 and a half against Michigan State. All right. Let's see what Dinger says here. He has here Michigan State, no flint, the one with the bad waters. That's in poor taste, Dinger. And Pennsylvania State exit, 74s. 74s? 74 seconds? I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Penn State looks like they have settled down from their own five start, so they should be able to out-talent the Spartans to victory. However, they're still mostly broken, so 14 and a half is too rich for me. Michigan State and the points. Interesting, interesting. All right, Wisconsin and Iowa. This is pretty much a pick'em game. This says that Wisconsin's a one-point favorite here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I actually just got an invite from Tom to do the uh, morning scoop. So I'm going to do this podcast. I'm going to click save, and then I'm going to go do the morning scoop. Sorry if I was a little distracted. We're doing Wisconsin-Iowa. Is that what's happening? Wisconsin and Iowa. Wisconsin, a one-point favorite. This is pretty much a pick'em. Oh, uh, Wisconsin. Easy. Go. Yep. Same. Wisconsin. Uh, let's see. He has Wisconsin Cheeseheads and the Iowa Cornholes. Hawkeyes are on a four-game run while the Badgers are on a two-game skid. Two games, their offense looked awful in. COVID broke Wisconsin, Iowa to win. All right. LSU, next game, LSU and Florida. Florida is a 23 and a half point favorite. Not enough. 23 and a half. Not enough. Give me Florida. You know, I'm going to go with LSU here. I'm going to go with LSU. Florida wins easily. 23 and a half is too much for me, knowing Florida's defense. I know I know LSU's bad this year, but Florida's defense. I'll take LSU to cover. Okay. <laughs> LSU, no, no. Florida's going to score at will. The only way, the only way Florida doesn't win this game by more than 23 points is if they choose not to. That's it. And and they, and they may, and they may, may. and And they may may choose not to. Yep. All right. Uh, Dinger says Louisiana history channel swamp peoples at the Florida also swamp peoples without Joe Burrow. There is translate there to translate. Uh, Coach O's unintangible. Unintelligible? I can't read. Unintelligible. (laughs) Thank you. Small print there. Mutterings, the wheels have fallen off at LSU while Florida is playing well, very, very well behind Trask. 
The Tigers have zero chance of winning. But my gut says some 2020 level nonsense in the fourth quarter keeps the Gators from covering LSU and the points. All right, last game here. Is this Pac-12 after dark? No, 7.30. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's one of our favorite games. It's the colorful, it's our colorful uniform matchup here. USC and UCLA. Yeah. USC, USC is a two and a half point favorite. USC two and a half point favorite. I don't know what to do with this. Um, mostly because I've not hardly watched any Pac-12 games this year. That's mm-hmm. just the truth of it. USC is currently undefeated, so good for them. Uh, they, they've defeated Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and Washington State. And they beat all of those teams except Arizona State by the spread provided. So, you know, it's it seems like a good seems like a good number. Um I'm just then I don't know, just I'm gonna go USC. But I'm I I, I don't I'm not I'm not say I wouldn't put actual money on it. Like don't ever real life gamble. Policy of the show, don't ever real life gamble. But mm-hmm. just don't just keep your money in your pocket on this one. Don't don't put any money on this guy. Yeah. I got USC. That's it. No reason. I just had yeah. USC. That's fair. All right. Um he had to your South South Carolina Hot Heltons in the LA Pod person kelly's okay. I, uh, I that's so cal so cal so cal so cal hot heltons <laughs> kyle in the future i will copy and paste the text into here so that it's big enough for you to read but i think you need to get glasses thank you <laughs> <laughs> chip kelly died we aren't, we aren't young anymore buddy Chip Kelly died during the 2015 offseason, and the NFL used an alien pod to clone a new one. The NFL, like they do with everything else, screwed it up. USC to cover. All right. And that is all seven of our picks there. That is all seven of our picks. And we messed up badly <laughs> through that. Yeah, no, that was that was not our uh, shiningest moment. As a no, podcast. It sure wasn't. It sure wasn't. <laughs> oh boy. All, All right. right. Let's, Kyle. let's get into some Ask Sloop Cast questions. Yes, 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 yes. Let's do that. All right. All right. Our geographically challenged friend, Michigan Bucknut. Do you think we'll see more of Baron Browning at middle linebacker next weekend? I think so. I think you see more Baron Browning at middle linebacker. Um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> maybe. It, it, Maybe not because because of Northwestern and the type of style that Tough Borden, Borland, yeah, the, you, the way the way that he he plays the middle linebacker, I think I think you might see more tough. I think you're you're going to see tough more. You make a compelling argument, but I I think I think we'll see more Baron. I think we'll see generally more Baron Browning. That's not to say we'll see him more than tough but maybe a, a okay, bigger okay. helping we'll see more of it okay i see yeah. what you mean and, and then i think we'll also see just going to throw this in there as a bonus i think we're going to mm-hmm. see more hickman as well yeah all right our homie sun card what is more practical in 2020 learning to code or learning a second spoken language more does he mean practically achievable or practical skill set I don't know um, if you've, but I'll, I'll, I'll say practical skill set. Learn a second language. Yes. Yeah. You don't need to learn to program. No, that's Kyle and I are freaking computer scientists and I know a bit of PowerShell and that's it. That's about it. Yeah. That's about it. All right. Uh, next here we have young kids Midwest. Again, all of these are on our Discord. Check the link on how to, to join our Discord. It's a lot of fun there. We're on there more than any other social medias. It's like family. It's like family in there. There you go. 
All right. He asks us, why does, social, why does social media cause the air, arrogance and disrespect of other other Big Ten fans to come out? Is it due to the anonym, anonymity? I can talk today. Anonymity. Say it with me, Kyle. Say it with me now, Kyle. Anonymity. Now he's going to drink instead, which honestly, not a bad choice. Uh, you know, it used to be back in like the message board early days of the internet, back when like message boards were our primary form of of social media, mm-hmm. before we had the term social media. A lot of the time, someone, uh, things you hear all the time is that, you know, people on message boards are terrible people. And the reason they're terrible people is because of everyone's anonymous and if people actually had to put their real names on stuff, this is what people used to say. If people had to put their real names on stuff, then people wouldn't be such pricks and everyone would be a lot nicer on the internet. If we had to put our actual names on stuff, well, then Facebook happened and, and people were still, <laughs> and I tell you what, it didn't get better. <laughs> nope. It sure did it. So I know long, I, by the way, I used to believe that myself. I used to believe, well, everyone's mean on the internet because everyone's anonymous on the internet. Well, go spend some time on Facebook if you hadn't, if you haven't somehow. By the way, don't actually do that. Or go spend time on uh, neighbor, was it neighborhood? What's it called? Next door. Where you join based off of your neighborhood. And these people are literally just like across the street and they're starting flame wars on this app. It's ridiculous. So, no, I don't believe it's because of the anonymity. It's a thing I once believed, but no more. All right. Our good friend, the Mad Canadian, asked, if you had to enjoy only one deep fried dessert forever, would it be the Twinkie, Snicker Bar, or Oreo? A not answer would lead to speculation that you are secretly a T-Ton fan. Hmm. I, of... Though of those mentioned, the only one I've had is a deep fried Oreo. Mm-hmm. I've Same. not had I've a only deep had fried... one of those. Yeah, and uh, the deep fried Oreo is great. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll go with the Oreo. I don't know. I don't know what he thinks the. I don't know what he thinks the answer is. I don't either. I'm more intrigued by the Snickers bar. Yeah, not the Twinkie, not the Twinkie one. No, but... Twinkie's fine, but. I would much rather have a Snicker or an Oreo over a Twinkie. Absolutely. Yep. Duncan from the Discord. It's Frox the Discord now. Oh, yes. With the <laughs> X. Yes. Duncan Frox the Discord. And I'm not going to do the X on every single one of these. So <laughs> assuming Ohio State plays Wisconsin on Champions Week, which not. Nope. <laughs> which Wisconsin team experiences a more thorough kicking at the hands of of an angry and motivated Ohio State 2014 or through 2020 2014 like you just don't yeah I that that that's 59 to nothing like you 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 just don't you just don't bet against 59 to nothing no especially I'd like to and I like to remind people of this Wisconsin was favored in that game So whenever, oh, Vegas knows. Vegas always knows. Guys, Vegas knows. Uh, Ohio State beat the spread (laughs) in that game by 60, I think it was 62 points, 63 points. They beat the spread by, I think it was 62 points. That is a rare accomplishment when you can beat the spread by 62 Mm -hmm. points. All right. And the last question here, Jared. From Stuart underscore E for US Vet. He asked us, Jared, mm-hmm. simply WTF. Yeah, this this was uh, in the timing of this was in direct response to the game being canceled. And to that I say, indeed. WTF. WTF. It sucks. But all we can do is move on. That's all we can do. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle, uh, Stuart underscore E for us vet, uh, in lieu, cause we couldn't do the, we couldn't do the, say the names from the other team, know your enemy thing. He said, Hey, can I send you something a little different? I said, mm-hmm. sure. Why not? So he sent us, uh, the Ohio state 
2020-2021 hockey roster and highlighted a few names for us to attempt to pronounce. All right. Let's let's try our best, which is going to be which is going to be really bad. <laughs> we 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 needed the mad Canadian for this. Mm-hmm. All right. Number 4, um Leighton Ack a a hack a hack a hack a hack Leighton a All right. Number 9, Dominic Vidoli. Uh, that's a good performance. I like that one. Um Mark Chermeta Chermita? Cheramita? 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 Number eight, Eugene. Oh, boy. Fadave? Fadave? Fad, no, it's going to be Fad Yeyev. Fad Yeyev? Fad Yeyev. Fad Yeyev. Okay. Fade, yeah, we're close enough. Close enough. He's from <laughs> He's from the Ukraine, by the way. Um, he, this guy's from Illinois. Maybe this will be better. Nope. Uh, Camille said, said, Laka said, Laka said, Loka. Okay. From Nor from Norway, Travis Chalor. Trelor, 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 Trelor. I like Trelor. I'll go with that one. Okay. And uh, that that's all of the that's all the highlighted names for the Ohio State hockey team. This right. was this was your edition of Stuart makes us read names that we can't read, a segment to be named later. All and right. Kyle, that's the end of the show. That is the end. No, um, no, no, no. Your enemy. Fingers. Oh, don't don't rub it in. Get one next weekend. We'll get one next weekend. Hopefully. Jared, positivity. Positivity. (laughs) That that was me being positive. Uh, That's the end of today's show. Um, I want to encourage everyone, check out uh, thesloopcast.com. We can find links to all of our stuff, including our t-shirt stores, of which I'm wearing a 7071 t-shirt right now. I'm a sort of, this is, this says Ohio beer only. I know my camera's flipped and I apologize, but uh, I designed this myself. It says Ohio beer only. And it has a bunch of Ohio brewers on it. And so if you're ever wondering, hey, what's some uh, good breweries in the state of Ohio? You can just buy this T-shirt and treat it as a map of sorts. There you go. That's at the 7071 store. You can visit that at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Or you can visit the Sloopcast merch store, which is merch.thesloopcast.com. Or you can just come join us on the Discord uh, or for that matter, just go to the sloopcast.com and you'll find links to all the other things, including the YouTube channel, including the Twitter accounts, including our Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, accounts, it's just links to all the things at the sloopcast.com. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? One thing, Jared, one thing, the Columbus crew. All right. The yeah. Columbus in the MLS crew. cup. Yep, they will be playing the Seattle Sounders, guys. Eight eight thirty this Saturday night. Don't, I was don't. I was looking forward to an all Saturday, uh, watching teams in Columbus play. Yeah, but I got to hold off and watch watch the one team there at eight thirty, on Fox, the last official game, Jared, at Map Free Stadium. Yeah, it'll be the last crew game at Map Free. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to keep the stadium open for like, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for community events. So th- there'll still be soccer happening at map free stadium, just not, uh, MLS soccer, but yeah, that's, um, I, I was about to say, I'm going to miss map free stadium, but I, I'm, I'm probably not mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, only from a, only from a nostalgia standpoint, it was it was just sort of a stadium. That's mm-hmm. that's it. But from a nostalgia standpoint, I will miss yeah. it. How about this 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 game here? I know he's no longer the he's no longer the coach there, but but um, where where are you going, buddy? <laughs> the coach coach that was for um 
Seattle and Columbus. Yeah. Brought actually both programs up, made them relevant. I believe he won a title with Seattle. I can't remember. I might be wrong there, but I believe he might have won a title over at Seattle. Siggy Schmid. Ah, yes, yes, yes. It just, it just, it's just fun to see that the two programs that he lifted up during his tenure at each, um, at each co- soccer club are playing at the MLS cup this year. Uh, it's an amazing Testament to him. Mm-hmm. I know the crew is getting a few more players back from COVID yep. this, this, um, game here. Uh, so definitely, uh, Things are looking good. It's still going to be a very tough challenge as it is the MLS Cup there, but keep our fingers crossed. By the way, keep in root for your root for your hometown Columbus crew. Should have mentioned this, um, but we were talking about Tough Borland mm-hmm. and how many snaps he's going to get. Mm-hmm. Tough Borland and Josh Proctor both were photographed by and and the photograph put out by the uh, Ohio state football Twitter account as two players who were practicing on the field this week. So presumptively they were two players who were probably contract contact traced. Can't say that ever contact traced and not tested positive. So they were on the field practicing. So presumably they will be on the field the next time for Ohio state and would have been this weekend had there been a game. So that's, that's it. That's, that's all I wanted to point out. We were talking about tough Borland earlier and it just totally slipped my mind until you brought up the crew, getting some guys back. It does look like the next time we see Ohio state on the field, that Josh Proctor and tough Borland will be available. All right, cool. All right. That's all. That's it. Episode. Uh, yeah. That, again, visit the sloopcast.com for all the stuff, including our social media, our merch stores, Patreon, discord, all those things. Uh, you can even link to our sponsors there. You can link to Iron Bean and Mad Canadian at thesloopcast.com. And uh, tonight's ending band, a uh, bit of a Columbus May Stay from back in the day, uh, Watershed. That's the name of the band, Watershed. Uh, and so you can check the show notes for links to Watershed stuff, the name of the song, a link to the song, all those things down in the show notes. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Watershed. You know, Kyle, this was already going to be a busy night. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Try Because we're recording this on a Thursday night as opposed to our normal Wednesday night. So mm-hmm. I have to get this thing out pretty quick. Um, and then Tom's like, hey, want to do the morning scoop? And like, I can't say no to that. (laughs) So just add one more thing to the fire. Jared's not sleeping tonight. It's all good. It's all good. I do it because I love it. Gosh, darn it. Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and end this here, Jared. Yep. I'd like to once again thank Watershed for ending today's episode. And I'd once again like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. Iron Bean Coffee. Uh, let's see. I talked last about the, which which coffees? I almost said beers. Which coffees did I talk about last time? I talked about the Ride or Die. I talked about the Fierce. I talked about the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Uh, those are all available in K-Cup. I talked about the Cast Iron. That's... One of my two, at the least, one of my two favorites right now. Uh, let's talk about some of the darker ones. We talked about the Fierce, which is the highly caffeinated dark roast. But there's also the Fear No Evil, which is not even a dark roast. It's a black roast. It is roasted to the brink of flames. Thick, rich, black, dark roast is void of all light. It has the sheen of polished armor and the feel of cocoa butter. Uh, I'm going to have to try that one. I don't normally go for like the super dark coffees, but I'm gonna have to try that one. Uh, the drink from the skull of your enemy. I know I have, by the way, I have the fear no evil right here. So I, I am in fact going to try it. Cause I have it in one of the sampler bags, which by the way, the, the six pack sampler is back. Uh, instead of buying one thing of a pound of coffee, you can buy six things of 
a quarter pound of coffee, and that way you can sample a bunch of the different coffees that I'm talking about right now. The Fear No Evil is the Black Roast I just talked about. The Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy. I know I have one of those in a sampler as well. I haven't tried it yet, though. It's a traditional Indonesian coffee that is edgier, smokier, thick, creamy, chocolatey, with strong notes of cedar, sweet tobacco, wine, and spice. That sounds amazing. I don't know why I haven't cracked that one open yet. That's going to, after I finish off the, the ride or die, I think that's going to be my next one. So I'll get back to you guys on that one eventually. Uh, so you can find all of that and a bunch more, uh, including a bunch of coffees named after the Nordic gods themselves at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode also brought to you by the Matt Canadian Barbecue Company. They are Ohio proud guy bleeding barbecue machine yeah <laughs> so so right there on on his twitter page <laughs> um what else can we say about him he great guy great guy personally great seasonings uh join our join our discord and he'll give you some some tips there like what what type of seasoning to use of course yeah. his seasonings of course of course of course and whether to grill it or deep fry it or air fry it. <laughs> or air fry. Yes, or air fry. Yes. <laughs> but we had a we had a long conversation in the Discord about how to season cast iron cookware. So, I mean, if you don't want to ask Sloopcast, but maybe you want to ask the Mad Canadian, make sure to join that Discord because he's in there answering questions all the damn time. Yes. Uh, let's see. Some some of our favorites here. The Snoring Heat, the Smoked, S P Bud very versatile uh seasoning there the carry steak another very versatile and the four horsemen that jared is just putting right up to your face there there i was trying to get the dang camera to focus and it's still only kind four of horsemen it. his spiciest one yet check out those and all 14 of the seasons over at the mad canadian bbq.com that is the mad canadian bbq.com be sure to use the promo code Sloopcast 10, that is Sloopcast 10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Man, Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. What's up, YouTube? My face, season six. Hear all of our season six episodes in a playlist right here on my face. Kyle's face, the subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this on our channel, or you can subscribe to it on the Buckeye Scoop. Or you can subscribe to the Buckeye Scoop if you're listening to this on the Buckeye Scoop. Uh, you can listen on whichever channel you want. It honestly means nothing to me. Wherever you want to listen to us, their channel, our channel means nothing. But please subscribe to both. That's, that's it. Please subscribe to both, but listen wherever you want. So once again, Kyle is the subscribe button. I'm the playlist button. Peace. <laughs>